Fellas, are you a member of QAnon? Do you believe everything that you read on the internet? Stop! Wait! I have the solution. Don't click off! I can teach you how to read things on the internet. I can show you how to navigate the waters and how to tell what's real from what's fake. What's fact from what's opinion. And that is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take a look at some hot takes, some steaming video game opinions. We're gonna say, yeah, that one's true, or no, that one sucks. And I will be your guide. If you like it, I would like you to subscribe. I would enjoy it if you did that. I have to ask you because you've stopped doing it. You know how low my numbers are? It has plateaued. I need help and you're the help. Please, for the love of God, hit the red button. Let's get started. Scribble says the final hours of a game are significantly more important than the first few. Games can be slow to start, but a slow burn will be satisfying in the end. The game that fails to stick the landing leaves a sour taste in your mouth and hurts the experience more than a poor opening. Our game's better at the front or at the end? And it looks like we're split 50-50, and I guess that makes sense. Most people say this is an opinion. It's not true. The ending doesn't matter as much as the beginning. No. No, that's fake. That's an opinion. That's not true. The beginning is the most important part. Do you know how many games there are on the Steam Marketplace? Do you know how many games there are in the eShop? Do you know how many games I could play for free right now if I wanted? I could ditch this whole video. You better hook me in the first 30 seconds. If you get to the ending, who cares? You made it to the end. If you made it to the end and the ending sucks, that sucks. Oh well. But you know what? That hurts. A sequel. At least you still paid for it and you played the whole thing. It's more important to get the opening down. How many people haven't even beaten Gascoigne? There's a certain amount of people that have played Bloodborne and like only 20% have ever beaten Gascoigne. Do you know how few people are going to see the ending of your game? Maybe half. Maybe. And you better... It, it, that's if it's good. No, the opening is more important. Thank you for your terrible, terrible tweet. Mark says video games are way too addicting to some people and should be limited to a certain age. For example, if you're under six years old and you can't play video games, go outside and ride a bike. Are video games too addicting? Damn, a lot of gamers in the chat saying no. A lot of you guys don't agree here, huh? Video games are too addicted to people and should be limited to a certain age. Is this fact or an opinion? You guys, it's actually true. And I think you guys are the lost generation. A lot of you guys are just addicted yourselves and you don't know it. So I'm here to be your Dr. Phil. Back when I was a kid, video games sucked. They were so fucking bad. The best video game we had was like Tony Hawk, which is good, but like, you're not gonna lose your life to Tony Hawk. You're not gonna lose your life to Half-Life or Halo. You might play it a lot, and Halo 2 had online, but you're not gonna lose your life to it. Games now have been optimized and developed in such a way to milk your brain of its nutrients at all times. And I genuinely think there's going to be a point, if we're not there already, where it's going to like negatively impact youth's lives. Already it's an issue for people with the ad ad addict gene, right? If you can get addicted to stuff, if you have the gene, that's already a problem. And I see a lot of people in the chat saying, uh, saying not all games. What you need to understand, how are most kids playing games right now? I would say on their phone. Wouldn't you agree that mobile games are likely the ones that are the most likely to try to get their hooks in you and keep you coming back? Those are the games that are the most optimized to, to activate your receptors. If you give like an eight-year-old Candy Crush, something like that, I don't know what, what the hot sewer surfer, snake but i feel like if you give that to a kid and he is predisposed to that addiction thing it's going to carry him into the later parts of life i think that there is a an aversion to the concept of like video game addiction right because most people i think have a pretty good handle on it but a lot of people get sucked up in it and as get, games get more and more optimized and more and more likely to just steal your brain i think it's a legitimate concern and i'm not saying it's anybody's fault but it's a thing. So the this isn't a bit bit. It's not a bit. If it's a bit, I'll tell you it's a bit. Unless it's funny to not. But this is real. I think technology is a scary thing. Maybe it's because I'm a dad now. Maybe I'm just an old fuddy-duddy. I don't know. Oh boy, 
it's our good friend, Grand Pooh Bear. There he is, Grand Pooh Bear, the Mario master himself. says Sonic games, as a whole, are overrated. What do you think? True or false? Coney, you only put him up there because he's a cool guy and also a big streamer. No. 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 We've never talked about Sonic on this show. We're about 30 seconds in, 69% say, fun fact. Oh, get back. Back to 69, yeah. Good, I locked it in. Boom. I feel like I'm playing Price is Right. We got the funny number. Sonic Games is a whole or overrated. 69% say fact. 31% say opinion. Guess what? Once again, it is the rare... Both! It's both! To most people. To most people. This is true. Because Sonic Games haven't been good since like 2001. They're just not good. None of them. And then every once in a while, you'll have some weird person like, Oh, I really like colors. Generations was good, right? Don't you like old things? <laughs> no. There has been one good Sonic game for the past 20 years, and it's Mania. And it's not even made by them, and they dicked over the people that made it! Sonic games are overrated on the whole. However, I also think it's an opinion. Because I think a lot of people know Sonic sucks. And this is just the Sonic cycle, right? It's like, this is, this is the thing where everybody says this next one looks good, and then it sucks, and then they're like, okay, well, maybe the next one will be good, and then it comes up. But I feel like that doesn't even happen anymore. I feel like we're post-Sonic Cycle world, where people see this shit, and they're like, oh, brother. It's this asshole again. By the way, Sonic was good in one, two, three, Knuckles, Spinball, and Mania. You got off the one hand. You now have two hands of good games. CD? No. No, no. No, no. <laughs> no. No. Not CD. Smash Cut. Oh, this one. This one. You know, I, I could tell this was worm. This was a worm wriggling on a hook. This is a this is bait. I know what the but I had to bite it. Is Toad a better character pick than Waluigi? No. No, he's not. He's not, but fuck you for making me choose between them. You shouldn't have done that. You're actually making me choose between two of my children. I know a lot of you see Toad, and you see Toad that will pop up sometimes, and you think, oh, Coney loves Toad. He'll pick that. No. You don't understand how much I want Waluigi in Smash. What would Toad even do? Would he be Captain Toad? I don't want to play as that. He can't even jump. Waluigi can dance. He can party, he can play tennis, he can play golf. Waluigi has more personality than so many other characters in the Mario lore. He deserves it. He's amazing. Did you guys know this? I feel like most people don't know this. Did you know the reason Waluigi cheats is not because he's evil or mean. He thinks everybody else is cheating. He cheats because he thinks you're cheating. And he's like, well, I have to try. If they're cheating, I have to try. Isn't that the funniest fucking thing you've ever heard? That's so fucking funny and sad. I think that's so funny and so real. And also, Waluigi apparently was just standing around. He has no relation to anybody. Wario was just like, I need a tennis partner. And he found this skinny, lanky guy, and he dressed him up in purple. Toad is great, but Toad's role in the Mushroom Kingdom is to be an empty... He's a canvas. He's a blank canvas. He can be whatever you want him to be. And I think that's what makes him valuable. Making him a character strips him of that, because then he has this soul identity, you know? It's like Yoshi is the Yoshi. That's stupid. They're all Yoshis. Thank you for your opinion, but I'm still mad at you for doing that. You know you shouldn't have done that. I will never do this again. I will never do this again. If you only like a game when you're winning, maybe you don't like that game as much as you think. 80% say true, 20% say opinion. I'm going to cut it off because it looks like it's, uh, it's pretty clear. If you only like the game when you're winning, maybe you don't like the game as much as you think. Not true, because then I wouldn't like any game. I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't like it. I liked Street Fighter V, and then I started playing people that did 80% of my HP in one hit. And I'm like, I don't know if I actually like this, because this is the real game. There are a lot of games like that. Oh, I really like Smash Ultimate. This is really fun. Oh, this online Mega Man only does Leaf Shield and it's winning. Maybe I don't like this game. Then it's a fact? No. I'm not saying it's fact. 
I'm saying if I'm getting beat over and over and I'm not having fun because I'm losing to what the game actually is at a certain point, that's not fun. And I might like the game, but I don't like that part. I'm not agreeing with them. No, I'm not. You're uh, you you're trying to twist this. Don't twist me. Let's let's lay some groundwork. Apparently, there's there's a, there's an issue of communication. I enjoy the game. I buy the game. I enjoy it. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I get to a point where I hit a wall, right? And that wall is where the real game is online. And then I start losing, and I'm losing, and I'm losing, and I'm losing, and it's not fun anymore. And I'm not having any fun. I feel like I still liked that game. I liked the core game. I don't like the competitive side of it. You can like a game without liking the competitive side. No, you could go both ways on this. No, you did. Okay, okay, you got. No, what you guys are doing is you're just saying it's the same thing as the tweet, but you could have done the other way around. Do you just want both? Do you want it to be both? I get. What the fuck do you want? I don't know what to do. Can we shake on both, I guess? Fine. I, this is a reluctant shake. You guys are so stupid. You're so stupid. I'll shake your hand, but you're so stupid. You don't get it. You're so dumb. YouTube audience, you're much smarter than these assholes. Yeah, YouTube, listen. You guys are so much smarter than all these guys on Twitch, and that's why I know you're going to go below and click the subscribe button to get free videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's why you're going to do it, because you're smart. Smart of these chuckleheads. Ooh, Awu Bunny, menace to all meteors. They say to me... Combat isn't that satisfying. We're just not exposed to enough non-violent video games to know what we could be playing. So what this person is saying is that combat in video games isn't that big a deal. The only reason that you really love it and you dig it that much is because you don't know what else is out there. Combat seems to be the basic, like, foundational block of many gameplay loops. It's fake! When I kill stuff, I feel good. When I end life, when I kill something on the screen, I feel joy, and that's the only way I can feel good. I've played visual novels. I've played Stardew Valley. I've played Animal Crossing. I'm bored as shit. I can't even hurt people with the net. I've hit my villagers on the head with the net so many times, and you know what happens? They say, do you want me to leave? If their brains are not splattering all over the island, I'm not enjoying it at all. So I get what you're trying to say here, I've tried plenty of games. I've tried so many genres. I've tried visual novels. That's the only game that doesn't have combat, I think. Like Harvest Moon. Start. Ace Attorney, kind of, but that's that's mental combat. I, I do think that there is a wellspring of stuff that we could be making games about in different gameplay loops that would be interesting without combat. People are saying Monkey Ball in chat. Sure. Monkey Ball is pretty good. There are certain loops that we found but on the whole that doesn't mean that combat isn't satisfying combat is incredibly satisfying outer wilds that game was boring as shit oh cool game of the year let me try it fly to a planet read for 20 minutes i am asleep the game's about connecting to other people i do that in my own life plenty i'm sick of these games that are just like bro it's about human bonding and connection. Death Stranded. Outer Wilds. Little Big Planet. <laughs> little Big Planet, at least you get to jump. That's not that's a little different. At least I get to jump in that game. Also, I can kill people, which is very fun. Thank you for your opinion. Our good friend Bloody Knight has chimed in. Says pollen and insects make spring suck ass. Otherwise, spring would be the best season. What do you think? Pollen and insects make spring suck ass. Otherwise, it would be the best season. Most people say this is true. No, it's not. No. Maybe spring sucks ass if you're a beta. Beta! You have recessive genes. Oh, I'm allergic. I don't care, bro. Flowers are pretty. It smells so nice. The sun is out, but it's not so hot as to be overbearing. As someone with good genes, who will pass on my lineage to, to further offspring. I love the spring. Flowers are pretty, they smell nice, the sun is hot. That's life, by the way. Pollen, insects, those are just a natural part of life and I enjoy life and life buds and blooms in the spring. So if you can't handle it, maybe work on that beta male. 
Oh, that's good. Rain cringe? Oh, dude, rain is beautiful. Rain allows life to flourish. And April showers bring May flowers. That's Paul. Sp spring is my favorite season. By a lot. I fucking love spring. Because I hate the cold. I've, I'm, I'm in heaven right now. It's starting to get hot. I'm in a very good mood. Dude, I love it. I'm a big fan. Okay, here we go. This is the best one of the night. The arrogance of the FGC far outweighs the merit. They live to act like they're better than any other gamer. Yeah, and that their games are more hardcore than any other game. But as someone with trophies that more than 90% of the UMVC community doesn't, is frankly a load of crap. What's what? Oh my god, I didn't know these were three. Oh, wow. I, didn't he say it was one of two? They said it was one of two, and now there are four. How did this happen? I wouldn't have added this if there were this many. I didn't mean to do this. I don't want to read the rest of this. Pick a new one. This was the last one. <laughs> the last one of the night. All right, let's read it. Whoops. What's worse is, while they love to trash games that they played for two hours, if at all, they also trash people that don't put 2,000 hours into fighting games, like that one incident Panda got involved in a few months ago. They act I don't know what they're talking about, there, by the way. I don't know what we got into. They act like if you dislike fighting games, you suck, which is hilarious when you consider that 90% of all scrub code submissions are from the FGC. Statistically, they attract more arrogant, ignorant scrubs than any other genre. Plenty of difficult games out there do not have this problem. I can't help but facepalm when some FGC cringe lord is like, fighting games punish you for being bad, why you hate. Like, there aren't literally thousands of games that also do that while providing better experience to most gamers. Yes, I'm salty about this subject. I can tell. That entire thread should be on scrub quotes. You know, I, I... When I first read this, I was feeling fact. But now that I've read it again, I, I just... I, I want to say opinion now. Just because I read four tweets, and I'm like, maybe you're the mad one now. Like, when I first read it, I was like, yeah, that's kind of true. You know, FGC people are a little uh, pious and weirdly, like, they'll be overzealous about the games they play. But now that I'm reading this, I'm like, actually, I think you're the mad one here. Also, the trophies. What trophies are there in you MVC3? It's got to be, like, like, beat story mode with every character? That's not the same. I, I get where they're coming from, because right now, uh, it's actually a common talk in the FGC. They're like, I saw some things on Kappa, too, that are saying, like, you know, everybody complains that these games are bad games and they're not fun, but nobody ever spends time in training mode. And I'm like, yeah, well, maybe if you made training more, more fun. The issue isn't that fighting games have, like, depth that nobody wants to explore. It's that those systems aren't developed in a way that makes it fun to play with. If people had fun doing that shit, doing the trials and doing training mode and stuff, they would do it. But people just don't have fun doing it. And I think it's really stupid to be mad at MOBAs. A lot of people will be like, you know, the MOBAs or these other games have all this learning that you have to do. Fighting games have the same thing, but nobody wants to do it. Well, yeah, because MOBAs make it more accessible. And I think too many people rely on the whole, like, oh, it's a team game, so you can blame teammates. I think that's only a part of it. I think it's also fighting games take a serious time commitment, most of them. And I don't necessarily think that that's a good thing. Fighting games have homework mode. Yeah, I feel like when it comes with fighting games, it's like, it's... I don't know why so much is, is placed in that. But I feel like they're inherently competitive because it's 1v1. And that might be the issue. I don't know, dude. I feel like fighting games are in this weird spot where, like, they're always going to be super niche. And I don't know how you fix it. How do you make that shit more, more accessible to people and more fun and intuitive? Because Smash does it, but not all people like Smash for good reason. It's, uh, I, I think it's a nuanced thing. I wonder, I genuinely wonder how Riot's gonna approach this. Because Riot seemed to find a way to sort of iterate on what CSGO built and eat some of its lunch. What I was thinking is that Valorant and CSGO sort of catered to two different communities. Like, it would sort of offshoot. But I was told it's actually not the case. Valorant's just, like, taking a chunk and going over here. And I wonder if Riot's gonna find a way to iterate on fighting games in the same way and just take stuff. You know what I'm saying? I thought that they would be two different audiences. I thought Valorant was going to meet people in the middle of Overwatch and CSGO. But that's not true. They're just taking people from CSGO, apparently. I feel like Smash is in the same spot. Somebody made a tweet that was like, Smash desperately needs another AAA, or, or platform fighters need desperately need another uh, AAA option. 
from a big studio because Smash is the only game in town. I'm like, yeah, that's true. But there was a big time on the Wii when everybody was trying and they were all really bad. But Valorant has a similar problem where it's like, once you get to a certain... I hit this point in Valorant where it's like, okay, I have an understanding of a lot of things. Like, I know where people go on the map, I know callouts and stuff, but now I gotta work on aim. And I ran into the same issue when I played uh, Street Fighter V, where it's like, I'm enjoying this, this is fun. Okay, now I'm getting touch of death every time I fuck up. Like, I can beat the person in footsies because I have more experience, but they have their combos down more, so I have to practice. I have to do homework. I don't want to do homework, so I'm not gonna play it anymore. I feel like a lot of games hit that wall, and it's like, what are you gonna do to push people over the wall? Maybe you just expect people to go over it themselves, but I think better games are gonna find ways to sort of trick your brain into doing it. You know what I'm saying? I think it'll be, um, I think it'll be, it'll be fun to see how these, um, how the fighting games sort of get eaten up by Riot's game, if they do it at all. And that's gonna do it for Factor Opinion. I hope you enjoyed the movie. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe, but wait! For the next Factor Opinion, I'm not doing this on Twitter anymore. I'm going to do it on YouTube. Reply below with your rankest, foulest, smelliest, most disgusting video game opinion. And maybe, only maybe, I'll talk about it on the next episode. Now, this will be a month away. I try to do these once a month. Otherwise, they're probably going to get stale. So if you do comment, uh, do so early. Yeah, actually, you want to get it right away. So comment right now. Literally right now. It's the end of the video. Just comment now. Because then I'll probably read it. And if... I get comments like 30 days out of 30. We're going to laugh at the YouTube viewers on the next edition of Factor Opinion. But for now, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Good movie. I need an outro. I need an outro. I need something to say at the end. Thank you for watching and get lost. Take a hike.